Good day, it's Paul Jarrett, the orthopaedic surgeon here. I would like to uh, show you a video of a talk that I've given in June at the International Federation for Surgery of the Hand in Berlin. And it's about a condition called Wartenberg syndrome and describing a, a case series. I had no conflicts of interest. So Wartenberg's uh, Neuropathy is a condition where one of the nerves called the superficial radial nerve is being compressed as it comes from deep in your forearm up towards the surface going between two tendons. And uh, this is a paper demonstrating how uncommon it is. So median neuropathy, that's typically carpal tunnel syndrome that affects uh, uh, your thumb, index finger, middle finger and half of your ring, f uh, your ring finger. That's very common. You can see m more than 90% of uh, uh, peripheral neuropathies in the upper limb. And ulnar nerve problems were typically at the elbow called cubital tunnel syndrome involving some of the muscles in your hand and your little and uh, one half of your ring finger. That's uh, just under 10%. And you can see the radial nerve pathology is uh, really quite uncommon. It's less than 300 times as common as median neuropathy, so not particularly common. Uh, here were two papers, one by a famous surgeon called Guy Fouché from Strasbourg in France, where he's looking at 52 cases of the condition. And then the bottom paper is from Lee Dellen and Susan McKinnon, two famous uh, nerve surgeons from the United States, and they had 51 cases. Uh, this was a large uh, series of operative interventions from 2008 and they had uh, 25 cases that they actually operated on and found that just over half the symptoms got considerably better but uh, just under half didn't. So they felt that uh, uh, operation uh, didn't reliably produce success and only in six cases did they during the operation found, uh, find anything which they felt was abnormal to, to visual, visualise. So my case series is a retrospective series over about 13 years. This is all patients who had non-sharp injuries to the nerve, so they uh, had blunt injuries or sharp injuries to other areas but didn't cut the superficial radial nerve itself. And they'd had to have uh, severe superficial radial nerve symptoms for at least three months, and usually it was a good deal longer. Uh, and they had to have had follow-up after surgery for at least six months. So this reduced the number of patients uh, who weren't included uh, due to not meeting all these criteria. So I had, um, as you can see, 23 patients in this group with a mean age of 35. There were no children, no elderly people, and a large number of these patients were insured by their work. There were also public patients and private patients in this group as well. On the image on the right here, you can see the nerve being looked at endoscopically. So the problems that these patients had uh, experienced to develop their symptoms. Some patients had fractures in the hand or the forearm. Uh, some people had had uh, trauma to the hand or blunt trauma to the forearm. Some people had felt that it was excessive use and there were no patients who had uh, experienced the development of symptoms following handcuff placement. I have seen that but uh, of the, but the patients who uh, had this uh, didn't uh, return for their follow-up adequately but none had surgery. So of the treatment, four patients of the 23 responded just to hand therapy and didn't require anything else. 19 out of the 23 went on to have injection, nine of which seemed sufficient to improve their symptoms to their satisfaction. And 10 patients uh, had injections which didn't work long-term and ended up going on to have surgery. And the picture on the right here, you can see the superficial radial nerve with uh, branching as you come distally. Sorry, I'm going to cough. <coughs> of the 19 patients who had an ultrasound, uh, no pathology was seen on any of these ultrasounds, and all these were performed by musculoskeletal radiology. Of the patients who went to surgery, uh, one question was how likely was the injection to have worked temporarily? And eight out of the 10 people it worked very well, but temporarily. And two patients, injection didn't give them any benefit. One of those patients responded very well to surgery and one less so. And of the 10 patients, six of them had neurophysiology. So that special nerve test, uh, uh, and six of them had that. All of that was normal with regard to superficial radial nerve. Also, a number of the patients had additional operations at the time of the superficial radial nerve decompression. So as you can see, four patients had a carpal tunnel decompression, one also with a scope. One patient 
<coughs> had a decrepence and intersection release and one patient had a decrepence release and one patient had a removal of metal in their hand. And of the ten operations, two were open and eight were endoscopic. So the results. Uh, overall, for the whole 23 patients, over half of them felt that their symptoms had effectively uh, more or less disappeared. Now about a third felt they'd had a, at least a 50%, <coughs> so 50 to 80% improvement, and uh, about uh, one-fifth of patients felt that uh, any response they had was less than half. Of people who had surgery, roughly similar results. And this was using a visual analog scale of 0 through 10 to assess their symptoms. So in summary, it's not a particularly common pathology and imaging is not reliable at diagnosing it, nor is neurophysiology. Uh, stepwise treatment, as has been proposed by others, seems sensible and uh, seems sensible uh, in, in my clinic, but it's not ubiquitously helpful, although quite often helpful. Obviously, I can't tell what the long-term natural history was, but these were all patients who'd had uh, continuous symptoms for long periods of time. And uh, the fact that they had had other operations at the same time make the results slightly harder to interpret, but they seem valid. So thank you for listening to that, and um, I hope to see you in the clinic. Bye-bye.